Welcome back to the podcast. I'm your host, Molly LaFountain from the blog and YouTube, Plum Branch Home. Today, we are talking all things about learning how to do with what you have and the lessons behind that. If you don't have a yummy drink, a coffee, a tea beside you, go grab one, pause this, go grab it, and come on back and join me. Over about the last four years, I've really learned what it means to be content with what you have and just I don't feel like I need to shop or buy things. And I've never been like that. I'm not, I'm not a huge shopper. I don't actually like shopping. It stresses me out so much. But just thinking, oh, I want to have a big house. I want to have a nicer car. I want to have more clothes. Those things. Like we, I've learned you don't need those things to be happy. The world wants you to buy things. This world wants you to be materialistic. This world wants you to want more all the time. And that's just not healthy. That's why a lot of us have anxiety and stress. And um, I might only be in my 20s, but I've learned this very young. So with getting married at only 20, I learned very quickly how to work with a small budget. And over the years of the last four years of our marriage, I've learned how to do with what we have. I mean, we first started out with being in college and I worked at a horse farm. I took care of the horses and I cleaned the barn. And Tyler, my husband, was a tour guide on campus. So we weren't rolling in the dough by any means. We had to pay for our school stuff. Um, We had our college apartment. We had a dog, um, which we still have him. And these things, like we really had to learn, okay, we need to do with what we have. But at that time, we didn't understand that. And now looking back, I've realized how much money I wish we would have saved. But it's like you have to figure that out for yourself. And so um, at first, that's what was happening. And then we traveled in a a DIY camper van full time um, after college for a summer. And then that really taught us to do with what we have because at that time we were running a travel content business and it was really fun, really awesome. We were going hundred miles an hour, it was a whirlwind, but that quickly we decided, okay, we can't live like this. We don't want to live like this. It, we just felt like we were not able to sustain ourselves and it really wasn't what we wanted anymore. So um, Tyler got a job, I started, I really wasn't sure what I wanted to do. I've always been called to the medical field, but then after college, I really loved blogging. I started my first blog in college. And as you know, if in the blogging world, in any business in general, whether it's online or in person, it takes two years to even see a paycheck. And with blogging and content creation, whether you have YouTube or a podcast like this or a blog, you have to put in the work for years before you see any benefits or any paycheck. And you never know if that business is actually going to work. Like I, this is my home branch home is my third business. And after four to five years, it's been about five years since I started my first blog. I'm finally to the point where there's money coming in. And by no means is it a ton, but it's starting to come in. I'm starting to reap what I've sown. And those seeds I planted five years ago are just now taking off. And I think it's important for people, especially if you're just thinking of starting a blog, to know when you want to go into this career path, when you want to be an entrepreneur, when you want to be a business owner, you have to learn to do with what you have, especially at first. I think um, that's what everybody here in Nashville does. They'll come and they want to be singers. They want to be songwriters and they got to do with what they have. They got to they got to go work a, a, a second job to make it happen. And I'm blessed to have my sweet husband that we've decided to take this time and live off of one income and do with what we have so that in the future we can have a really great life and a lot of financial stability. But to get there, we have to do with what we have for now. And there's just been these seasons of doing with what you have. That lesson has grown and then decreased and then grown again. So that's where all of this is coming from. And I think it's a really good lesson that I've learned that I just wanted to share and talk more about. So I think the first thing besides doing with what you have, it gives you a ton of life lessons. It builds character. When you don't have a ton of extra cash, when you don't have um, things that, when you don't have disposable cash, you have to do with what you have and you have to sit in the hard and you, it really builds grit and it builds character. And that is huge. It really teaches you that you can survive on a little bit. And so that's the one thing. And then it also makes you creative, which this is 
I think this is the greatest thing. For example, when we first moved here into our townhome, we had no furniture. And so we had to get creative with some things. At first, in the first six months, we actually used paper clips to hang up our shower curtain in our bathroom. And that's just the creativity. I know those shower hooks are only about $10, which we eventually did get. But at that time, we're like, we don't have 10 extra dollars to spend on this. We need to spend that on our groceries. We need to spend this on this or that. And so we got creative and I came up with the idea of using uh, paper clips and unwinding them and made them a circle to hang up our shower curtain and it worked just fine until we could afford those little clips that you actually use and then also another thing um, instead I realized cleaners household cleaners not only like I've talked about this before household cleaners have I've had health issues with before my thyroid would swell. I just didn't feel good when I was using like scrubbing bubbles, Clorox. Um, so that's one part. But the other part was the cleaners in the store are so expensive. And so I got creative and decided to make my own at home. I made my own scrubs for the bathroom. Um, an all-purpose spray, window spray, and that creativity saved us money. And now that we could, if we wanted to, we could buy all of those things from the store now but I don't want to. Why? Why do that whenever I've made that creative when I've made that creative decision and it works just fine, I'm going to keep doing it. So that's one thing you get so creative and it teaches you like to think outside the box. Think about do I really need to buy this or can I make it? And I think that's a great gift. And then also it teaches you to be content with what you have and just be happy and grateful for everything in your home, everything in your life. Um, I think we all kind of go by and think, oh my gosh, it would be so much better if I had this or the grass is greener on the other side of the fence. But when you learn to do with what you have, you become very content with what you have. Like we at first, like I was saying, when we first moved here, we didn't have furniture and we used dining chairs at this island to sit. And sure, we sat down lower, but we were content with what we had. We were happy that we even had chairs because when we first moved in, I remember our first night here, we um, sat on the floor and had some sandwiches and then we slept on an air mattress. And after buying an actual couch and chairs and a bed, it it makes you so grateful for the little things. And that was one thing when we were traveling in our DIY van for a while, it really makes you realize how you can be content with little. And I think that lesson comes from that. Um, we didn't have a lot in the van. We had a tank of water. We had to make sure we only use that. We didn't have a flush toilet. We had a composting toilet. We had a very, very, very tiny sink. And it just teaches you like, you don't need all of the stuff to survive and be happy. Happiness comes from family, friends, experiences, and just living daily life. It doesn't come from items that you can buy at the store, which also teaches you minimalism. If you don't know what that is, it's um, doing with a little bit. There's so many people that do the extreme side where they'll have five shirts, five pairs of pants, and that's it for their clothes. Or um, they won't have any extra things. They won't have house plants. They won't have um, trays to put their keys in, nothing. I'm not talking about that extreme. I'm talking about practicing minimalism as reducing the amount of stuff you have in your house, reducing the clutter and making sure everything has its place and everything has a use. I think that is really helpful. Even if you have a lot of money, I'm you can do with what you have and not spend a ton. So if you have enough money to get anything you want, you could still practice minimalism and think, do I really need that? Is there a place for it in my house? And do I have a use? So that was one thing that I found really helpful. It helps you consume less. You, when you start doing with what you have, you also learn how to do things for free and how to find things for free. You'll find there's free state parks, at least here in the state of Tennessee. We have, I think, over 50 free state parks. Our state parks are completely free to visit. You can go, you can hike, you can do a picnic, you play at the park if you have kids. Your dog can go run around and play off leash. There are so many things. Um, if you don't live in a place where state parks and national parks are free, there are parks all over the place. There's greenways, there's trails that you can go walk on. A lot of times cities will have different free activities and that's what I love about Nashville and I love about our area here in Middle Tennessee. 
our city has so many free things. You just have to look. I recommend signing up for the newsletters of the surrounding cities. So say you live in a small town, sign up for all of the cities around you that are within a driving distance for a day trip. That way you know what's free, what's going on, when there's festivals, and then go do them. There's always something going on that you can do without spending money. When you start doing with what you have, you also learn to live a slower, simpler life, which is a huge part of what the South is. And I think that's why I'm so drawn here and I love it here so much is people live at a slower pace. People live at a much simpler pace. It's not all about things. It's not all about money. It's not all about work. It's about living a truly peaceful life that's slow and simple. And when you start doing that, you'll find there's a lot of peace that comes into your life. You're not going to feel overwhelmed. You're not going to start feeling like you have to keep up with the Joneses. And that is truly a blessing. Another lesson is you are not consumed by the thought of money anymore. You don't go and try to find money all the time and work for money and live for money. And in a way, I mean, we all have to have groceries and we need to pay our bills and all of that. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about how in your, some people's brains, and I, I'm guilty of this. I used to be like this, um, especially after college of one, 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 one. We, I think we're all drawn as a human being with all of the marketing and all the advertisements and everything that we see we want to have more and we don't necessarily need that. So when you start doing with what you have, money is not your first thought anymore and it's not what you think will make you happy. You know, there's much more than that and you can create memories and experiences that mean more than money. And the last lesson I have learned with learning to do with what I have is just trusting and leaning on God more than anything. I have found that I cannot do this alone. I don't have the strength to do this alone, to be creative and come up with ways to do things, um, to save money, to be content with what I have. It takes a lot of prayer. It takes a lot of spending time with God. And if you are struggling with doing with what you have or being content with what you have, I highly recommend just praying about it. I recommend going to church and getting in that community because when you lean on God, you have the strength to do these things and you no longer have these desires of money and a bigger house, a bigger car, a better car, more clothes, all of this and that. You don't, you don't need that anymore. And I found that that melted away quickly after I started making that change of leaning on God rather than my own strength. Because I mean, we're human, we are going to fail. We are going to want things all the time. I mean, like I said earlier, the TV literally gives you advertisements all the time. Your phone gives you advertisements all the time. And so you have a hard time being strong as yourself, but whenever you lean on God and have his strength, it really does make a huge difference. I hope this episode was fun to listen to. Uh, I just wanted, like, this has been on my heart for a very long time. It's something that I have really grown into and I keep learning and I know I'm going to learn so much more. I by no means know everything. So I hope you enjoyed yourself. If you have not yet, please go follow the show. It means so much. You can follow us on Spotify and make sure you subscribe here on YouTube if you are watching. Until next time, go make your house a home.